Hello there. If you're new here, I wish you the warmest of welcomes, and today I'm going to run you through how I drew this in Procreate on the iPad. So the last time I did a black and white drawing, it turned out a little bit like this. Yeah, I don't know why there's so much random tape on the piece either. But this time, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Now, since I had the iPad, I thought, let's make use of it. Now, as with every drawing, I needed to know what I was going to actually draw. So, of course, I had to find a reference on Google Images. But I had no idea what I was looking for anyway. All I knew was that I wanted to draw a black and white animal like before. But obviously, I wanted to push the photorealism aspect of it. In the past, when I searched up black and white animals on Google Images, I saw so many portraits. Um, with like quite abrupt dramatic lighting as well. So I thought if I found, you know, just one of those images that spoke out to me, I would just grab it and draw it. So that's what I did. I found this lovely reference here and yeah, I just got to work. So I initially started by gridding out the image and labeling the horizontal and vertical axes of the image, aka the photorealism method, whereby you grid your photo reference and grid the canvas that you're drawing on. and essentially draw out each square individually instead of the piece as a whole. I learnt this method of drawing in school and I've been pretty much using it ever since. It's literally such a great method to hone your skills and push the levels of your artwork and the levels of your realism. You can go about it in different ways. You can either draw the outline and sort of work your way in towards the centre or you can just go square by square and I think I did a little bit of both. I tend to start with the eye and sort of work outwards and especially with furry creatures I tend to start at the stem of a fur if that makes any sense like the top part coming from the skin and working outwards um, and then yeah I just go out from the eye right down to the edge of the body but yeah I think it's, it's honestly up to you how you want to work through it it's you know, it's your piece of art, it's your method, it's whatever suits you. So in the reference image that I found, the lighting was quite soft and the cat wasn't completely in focus, it was more just the eyes. So a lot of the fur was a bit more blurry. But, you know, as I was drawing it, I had a tendency of drawing every line of fur quite sharply, which sort of removed the photographic quality of the drawing. So naturally, I went back and toned down some of the highlights with you know, the trusty eraser tool and drew more with the side of the pencil as opposed to the tip. Because, you know, the Apple Pencil gives you a real pencil-like feel where, you know, if you use the side of a pencil, you'd get a softer, bigger stroke um, instead of the harsh, you know, the harsh pointed strokes that the tip of a pencil would give you. So yeah, once I used the side of the pencil more it gave it a more softer glow which in essence added to that photographic image like quality so what you're currently looking at is the embedded procreate time lapse of the drawing here you can more clearly see the grid on the left and right sides and is another reason why i love drawing in procreate you never actually see the lines in the time lapse it's only in the moment when you're actually drawing it so it doesn't ruin your footage in the end to be honest, this turned out better than expected, but at the same time, I'm not 100% happy with the drawing. I feel as though I drew a lot of the fur too in focus, despite what I said earlier, but it's okay. We'll take this into the next drawing. And I think the hardest part of these drawings is being consistent and you know having that motivation to finish what you started, which is actually why I'm so grateful for starting YouTube, as it keeps me motivated and to grow and connect with my audience, which I feel just isn't there with any of the other social medias. The hardest part is overcoming that imposter syndrome, like fear of, am I good enough to showcase my work or speak online? But it's definitely worth it. So if you've been holding yourself back from creating a channel because of what others may think, just remember that fear kills more dreams than failure ever will. Okay. Thank you to everyone who watched the video. Hit that like button, subscribe, comment down below. Um, if you like this video, let me know. And if you didn't, also let me know. So, you know, that helps me make future videos that are better for you. Um, but yeah, if you could share this around, I would hugely appreciate it. But yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll play something soon. Thank you.